The real-life drama of asylum seekers uh, in Israel held in the so-called open detention facility of Cholot is now in the spotlight of a new theatrical company compromised with both migrants and Israeli actors. The show emphasized the moral and legal responsibilities of Israel towards refugees. A report by Shahal Peled. Much has been said about the Cholod detention facility in southern Israel, where since December 2013, the Israeli government has sent more than 1,500 Eritrean and Sudanese migrants. But for those living there, time stands still. There's nothing to do in Cholot. It's a prison. People are always hopeful. Maybe tomorrow or the next day we will leave Cholot. Why? Because we haven't done anything wrong. Bored and frustrated, they can leave the compound, but are bound to a 10 p.m. daily curfew. Mostly ignored, the inhabitants of Cholot were suspicious at first by an unexpected theatrical initiative. It started as just as a project that we wanted to go and to do some theater to, uh, I, I wouldn't say entertain, but uh, to have some education and activity there. Theater director Chen Alon and documentary filmmaker Avi Mugrobi decided to join forces when they first heard about the facility. For over a year, they have been working with a group of asylum seekers in an attempt to bring their hardships to center stage. When my wife gave birth, I didn't get any time off to be with her. When there were red alert sirens for rockets, my workplace didn't allow me to go and be with my daughter. Extremely shy at first, Yonatan now brings his personal story to life in front of hundreds of people. In the beginning, it was difficult for me. I would start laughing all the time, but slowly I got used to it. I saw how they worked on my difficulty and understood I had to do so as well. In another scene, Yonatan becomes an Israeli military officer. It is difficult for me to portray a soldier, to act against migrants, but this is the role I was given. We decided later on to, um, to incorporate Israelis, activists and professional actors in the group because we think that this is an Israeli problem. It's not only a refugee problem. It was very strong. Being, the, being both of the parts, being the refugee but being also an Israeli. Still, a cynical outsider would find it hard to believe that legislative theatre, as the play is called, could bring about political change. We can't change all the policy, but we can make a small change. And I think that we are started already the process to create it. Whether change is achievable or not, those deprived of their freedom refuse to stay put and will continue to sound the universal problem of migration, asylum and human rights. And with me right now to expand a little bit more about this subject is cultural correspondent Shahal Pellet. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. We have to remember that unlike every other prison where a prisoner is charged, he knows how long his sentence is, there's some kind of recreational program of education and culture. Here, the prisoners of Cholot Detention Facility have nothing to do. They don't know how long they will stay there. They have no trial. So this kind of activity, this kind of work that Avi Mugrabi and Khenalon did throughout the past year, every week driving six hours back and forth to this facility to work with them on their very unique stories and do this really wonderful product eventually, yes. this result of this play in front of hundreds of people who came. They're hoping to take this show across Israel and show these stories that are really, as they say, not only the migrant stories, but all of us. Do you understand my smile? Um, <laughs> I will tell you, because I, I, I wonder if the culture minister, Miri Regev, will allow this show to uh, be put out there after she said that uh, migrants are cancer like inside cancer. Israeli society. Well, I'm, I'm pessimistic, but we'll have to wait yeah. and see. And, uh, you know, from one attempt to break the barriers, we're moving to an extremely other attempt, but it's still to, to break what we know as the status quo. Um, staying in Israel, but once again, a very different story. Um, it's the second season of the Israeli X Factor here on Reshit TV on Israeli television. And this year there's a very interesting contender. Um, she is a Haredi woman, an ultra-Orthodox woman, who chose to uh, participate but in disguise. Let's see a short segment from it. <laughs> Change a nation, but you're biting your tongue. You 
It's been a lifetime stuck in silence. If we could say something wrong, if no one else. We will say just uh, that uh, she passed to the next stage. We she still did. Are, yeah. She she um, she went through successfully this audition. Now we'll have to explain that the, the reason she's discarded it, what she says that her community won't be supportive of her singing in front of a crowd. Local media already found out that she's pretty well known in the Haredi, the Haredi religious community. community, but only singing in front of women. In the Haredi community and re Jewish religious community, it is forbidden for men to hear women sing. And this this has been a controversial issue throughout the years. Also in uh, the the religious and websites the end, as well, it's a great her, dispute. We had this, we had this, we had this that passed and anonymous. Yes. Uh, and we'll Shah remain Shah to uh, see who she is, hopefully yes. later. Uh, no, uh, Shahapel is not anonymous. Thank you very much uh, for being with me.